Hey guys, this is Seabass from Rockin' with Seabass, and I talk about the music history of bands and all the other music genres. Now today, I'm going to talk about my top picks of rock albums. Now, I know there are a lot of albums out there, and trust me, it was hard to pick for me, but I took a few albums that I've listened lately, and they are awesome. To give you a heads up, these are my opinions, of course, so try to understand that. But without further ado, let's get rockin'. Number one, Pyromania. It's the third studio album by English rock band Def Leppard. It was released on the 20th of January, 1983. It was the first album to feature guitarist Phil Collin, who replaced the founding member Keith Willis. Pyromania charted at number two on the Billboard chart, and it was literally right next to Michael Jackson's Thriller, which is pretty impressive. My favorite songs on the album, it's gotta be Die Hard the Hunter and also Stage Fright. Why do I like those two songs? Well, I have Stage Fright. That's why I like Stage Fright, and I love the intro, especially when he says, I say welcome to my show! And then of course, Die Hard Hunter. Well, I feel like a man that's gonna go out in the field and survive, and I just feel so epic, even with that guitar riff in the background. Oh yeah. Number two, it's Shout at the Devil. It's the second studio album by American heavy metal band Motley Crue. That's right, Motley Crue. It was released on September 26 of 1983. It was the band's breakthrough album, establishing Motley Crue as one of the top selling heavy metal acts of the 1980s. The singles, Look That Kill and Too Young to Fall in Love, were modern hits for the band. Shout Out the Devil and Knock Em Dead Kid were happened to be my favorite songs though. Shout Out the Devil, well, Come on, it feels like a rebellious song. I feel like I'm on the stage getting ready to shout at the devil and tell everybody to just get out there and step up for yourselves. And of course, knock them dead, kid, just like shout at the devil. Just knock them dead. When you have a homework assignment or some type of challenge in front of you, just knock them dead. I don't care what anybody else says, just knock them dead, kid. Number three, Painkiller. It's the 12th studio album by British heavy metal band Judas Priest. Dun dun dun! It was released in September of 1990, and it is the last Judas Priest album to feature lead singer Rob Halford until his return for 2005 Angel of Retribution, which is really good by the way, and the first to feature drummer Scott Travis. Metal Meltdown and All Guns Blazing, that is probably the two best songs off the album. I like Metal Meltdown because the intro is so raw. And you're like thinking like, oh, what's happening? Because he's all like, there's something coming in the night. And I'm like, oh, what's going on? What's going on? And, went on, and then he pops out of nowhere and saying, here comes the Metal Meltdown. And I was like, yeah, oh yeah. And then all guns blazing. Oh, what can I say? It makes me want to pick up a gun and start shooting in the air and saying, all guns blazing. <laughs> but that is paint killer for you. And one of the most heaviest albums by Judas Priest. Number four, The Number of the Beast. It's a third studio album by English heavy metal band Iron Maiden. Oh yeah, Iron Maiden. The album was their first to feature vocalist Bruce Dickinson. Bruce Dickinson! And their last with drummer Clive Burr. Oh. But anyway, The Number of the Beast, it was met with the critical and commercial success and became the band's first album to top the UK album chart and reach the top 40 of the US Billboard 200. Run to the Hills and Prisoner, that's probably my favorite songs. I mean, hello, in the beginning. We want information. Information. Who are you? And then it's like, oh, what's going on here? It's like, you're number two. Oh yeah, who are you? Well, I'm number six. Ha 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 ha. Anyway, that, that song, whoa, just awesome. But then of course, the other song, it's really good too. But I'm not getting into that. Number five, Injustice For All. It's the fourth studio album by American heavy metal band Metallica. It was released on September 7th in 1988 in Electra Records. This was the last album to feature songwriting and contributions by Cliff Burton, who died in 1986. Rest in peace, brother. And the first to feature contributions from his replacement, Jason Newstead. I would say the best songs is one of them is Harvester of Sorrow and One. Harvester of Sorrow, I mean, come on, the way it starts it out. Harvester of Sorrow! And then the, the song one, 
slow pacing, starts very slow, and then it builds up, and then all of a sudden he's all like, Darkness imprisoning me! I cannot see! I cannot do horror! I cannot live! I cannot die! Driving myself in hell! But anyway, those were my top five albums I picked from my metal category. What are your top five albums? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button right now. This is Seabass from Rockin' with Seabass. Take care, keep rockin'.